right, welcome back to the channel. So Terrence Bud Crawford is talking out the side of his neck a little bit about Errol Spence Jr., man. And I think that his evaluation of this fight, I think it's a little bit off. But he says what he thinks he will do to Terrence Crawford in an interview with Brian Custer. Let's talk about that in this video. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. is definitely the fight that most people want to see at welterweight. And hopefully it is going to happen soon. And hopefully it will happen. More than likely, it's not going to happen until, you know, at least 2021 uh, because of what's going on in boxing with the virus and it slowly coming back. Matches are starting to starting to come back. Man, I woke up this morning and Anthony Greer, Anthony Greer got beat. So got to go back and look at that fight. That's you know, but hey, man, that's what happens when Bison comes back. You know, some guys you like lose, some guys you like win. But right now, the guys that we like to fight and we want, like to see fight more than likely ain't going to be fighting because these are these are these fights that are that are being put on right now are small fights that with not a lot of crowd so that they can afford to pay the fighter based off the site fee uh, off of the off of the licensing fee or whatever the name of the fee is that the that the network is going to pay like ESPN. So big fights like Errol Spence Jr. And Terrence Crawford are a little ways out. But when asked about it, Terrence Crawford talked about the Errol Spence Jr. fight and said why he thought he, that he would beat him. And, uh, and essentially what he says was that he doesn't think that Errol Spence Jr. is going to be able to keep up with him, that he's going to change like he over the fight. He's going to change his style. He's going to change his pace. You know, he's going to change, he's going to change up things so much that it's going to, that, that, um, Errol Spence Jr. is going to fall behind, right? And because, and because if you know anything about, uh, Terrence Crawford and how Terrence Crawford fights, there are two different types of Terrence Crawfords in the ring with, with a fighter at the, at the same time. There's the aggressive Air, uh, Terrence Crawford who comes forward in the, in the, uh, orthodox stance and is looking to get you out of there. Then there is the southpaw defensive uh, fighter, uh, Terrence Crawford, who's on the back foot or uh, uh, looking for opportunities to feel you out and pot shot you, right? And it's not, and so, and then there's the switch that happens between the two where a fighter has to, you know, adjust the plan that they're taking into the ring. Because again, you have, you have Terrence Crawford who's fighting in both an orthodox and has a, pretty much a set, a set style for his orthodox to come forward in an orthodox stance and then the defensive side of it, which is a Southpaw stance. And then the transition from the, from Southpaw orthodox to Southpaw, you got to adjust to, and you also have to adjust to the switch between Southpaw and orthodox. So he figures that if by doing that, he's going to throw Errol Spence jr. Off and then Errol Spence jr. Is going to be out of, uh, you know, is going to be, you know, out of source. And he figures, so he figures that, the fight is going to be a chess match in that regard. Now, here's my thing. If you look at how Errol Spence Jr. fights, I don't think that that, I don't think that's going to do it. But most importantly, let me tell you with that, with that assumption, where, where the, where I think the problem is with the, the logic for that, with that. I do believe that will work and it has worked on Terrence Crawford in throughout his career. But this is a huge step up. This is a huge step up fight. And t and Errol Spence Jr. is going to bring things to the table to see, you know, that and we'll see whether or not er Terrence Crawford can adjust to those. But pressure, consistent pressure and and being able to get on the inside with somebody, dog, that switching from southpaw and orthodox when somebody's right on top of your chest, you know, hey, man, that may work. That may not work because the closer they are, the more likely you are to get caught in that uh, you to get caught in that switch. So. I don't think that that's going to be, and I, and I don't think that that's something that is that the higher level fighter that you get to, they've seen and they've seen it all. And they have the ability to make you, to press you and figure out whether you can deal with what they have to deal with, right? I mean, what they're trying to give to you. So I don't know, man. I think that that is a, I think that they, the approach that, that Terrence Crawford is, um, that Terrence Crawford is referring to, dude, works very well when you're talking about a guy, when you're talking about guys that you can outskill 
both ways, right? So Errol's, Terrence Crawford can beat somebody, completely beat somebody southpaw. Like, there's no, there's no need for him. He could fight an entire fight in the southpaw fight and beat, most, and beat most of these guys. He could fight, and he used to do this. Now, go back and look at the tape, right? Go back and look at the tape of his early fights, the ones before, the ones that are like in the parks, right, against low, uh, much lower level guys. The guys before uh, Bredis, before he fought Bre- uh, Bredis, I think it was Bredis Pr- Prescott, before he fought that Bre- his first step-up fight at 140 pounds, before he went back down to 135 um, and then won the belt against Ricky Burns. The fights that took place before Ricky Burns. Watch how Terrence Crawford fights against the, those lower-level fighters. He's almost completely orthodox. He's almost completely orthodox. He just, because they, there was no need for him to switch to Southpaw because there's nothing that they could bring him fighting orthodox. So he would just get him out of there. One long fights, but then once he stepped up, right, to somebody that could make him think, right, about fighting in the orthodox stance or he gets hit or something like that, he gets kind of wobbled off or not wobbled because, I mean, he has been wobbled and that does, when he gets cracked, that does, he does switch to Southpaw. You know what I mean? He'll switch to Southpaw and try to slow all that stuff up, right? But he never had to do that in the early weight classes because he could just get through them with, with Orthodox. But when he found, started fighting guys where they made him think from the Orthodox position, right? Similar to like um, he was fighting, I do believe he was fighting Igis Kalvinakis in the Orthodox stance before he got cracked. Check the record on that though because I think he, it, it, it was definitely a situation where with with um Igis Kalvinakis, where it was a cat and mouse type of situation, and Errol Spence, I mean, and Terrence Crawford was losing that. I believe that was a, I believe that was an orthodox, that that was an orthodox on orthodox matchup. But even if it was a southpaw, that particular style, um, Igis Kalvinakis was able to deal with. But then Terrence Crawford pushed forward, and then when he switched up the style, that's when he wound up walking, just walking down and knocking out. Uh, Igis Kalvinakis, right? So looking at somebody, though, say somebody like a Sean Porter, okay? Somebody like a Sean Porter. Sean Porter, you may not be able to outdo him in the, in the, in the orthodox stance. You could be going tit for tat with him in the orthodox stance, but then you switch to softball, and you still might be going tit for tat with him on an orthodox stance with a guy that has that much experience that is that, is that, level, is that level of a fighter, man. Um, one of the best switch hitters ever is, you know, is obviously um, uh, uh, Marvin Hagler, and even Ma- and Marvin Hagler definitely towards the later portion of his career, were like with John the Beast Mugabe and um, and Ray Leonard, got in there against somebody where they could deal with both the orthodox and the southpaw stance. What I think when you're looking at Errol Spence Jr., I think that his style, the fact that he is just that he pressures so much. First, he can he is in the southpaw stance. First, he's in the southpaw stance. So the, the orthodox stance for, for Terrence Crawford is not going to be something that's difficult for him to deal with because he's been dealing with orthodox fighters his entire career. But then it, when it's a southpaw and southpaw matchup, right, the, now that defensive shift for Terrence Crawford is not a defensive shift anymore for the, from the southpaw position because now it's southpaw and southpaw. And southpaw and southpaw would probably advantage on a southpaw southpaw matchup would go to the natural southpaw because he's the guy with the strong he's the guy with the um that that has the naturally stronger from that position. So, you know, I guess the big the way to look at it, you know, f- overall is that yeah, Terrence, that type of stuff would work against lower level fighters, and that's why people want to see Terrence Crawford fight against higher level fighters, right? Will that work against Danny Garcia? Is Danny Garcia going to get confused every time you switch from southpaw to orthodox, especially when they're prepared for it and they've watched you fight and they know your tendencies? When they can watch your tendencies and they play chess right with you and understand, okay, but these guys are actually bigger, stronger, and significantly more skilled. So I don't, I don't know. I think that wind up with Terrence Crawford, that might work. Like that might work for. Um, like again, I can't say it any other way. That might work for Victor Postal. That could work for Jeff Horn. That could work for um, Amir Khan. Is just washed, but Amir Khan and guys like that. That you know that they could fall for that okie doke. But 
Man, I doubt very much if you get if he get into there into the ring with a guy that's like the caliber of a Sugar Ray Leonard that he's going to be confused about you switching from Orthodox to Southpaw, and that these and when you're talking about guys that are really focusing on how you work and training towards you for years, that they that they're not going to know exactly what your tendencies are. So and that, but with Errol Spence Jr., that inside game, dude. That I don't know what. Terrence Crawford's going to throw some hands on the inside, dude, but Terrence Crawford's going to get caught up on that inside, too. But anyway, it, it's going to be a good fight. I can't wait, and I certainly hope it happens. That's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. With that, I'm out. Peace.